What's going on guys, it's Brian, uh, here back with another video. I've been thinking about a lot of what I want to do recently, um, with showing off my collection. Um, cause a lot of the videos that I've made, um, uh, and if Rookie makes a cameo here, sorry, um, a lot of the videos that I've made, uh, with the whole collection are either pretty long, or, uh, a little old. So, what I wanted to do, um, was do kind of like a top 10 or like a top 5 um, of each type of card in my collection right now um, so that it's a little segmented and easier for people to watch and sort of understand um, the uh, depth of my collection I suppose um, so I, uh, I'm starting first, it's going to be a few part series it's going to be, so tonight's going to be vintage um, a stipulation for vintage um, you won't see any autograph vintage uh, tonight. That will all be either in its own category or um, lumped into an autograph category. Uh, I haven't decided yet. Um, so you'll get vintage, you'll get probably autograph vintage as well. Um, more modern day cards like bats. Um, maybe a, a whole video about cut sigs. Um, maybe a video about. Um, like one of ones or, or base parallels or stuff like that so uh, it'll be a little easier for people to sort of see what I'm what I have rather than just like mail day here mail day there um, so I've got 10 vintage cards here um, they are in order from 10 to 1 10 being the w worst I guess 10th being the 10th best for one being whatever you know um, and this is no indication of, of value. It's just simply uh, what card I, I believe um, is, is tough in a tough grade or in a good grade or um, you know st stuff like that. Value doesn't have any indication in this list. Um, so number 10 with uh, 19, let's see if we can get a good image here. 1934 batter up this was um, there are four color variations of this card this is the black version maybe this camera angle isn't best hold on sorry yeah it's maybe a little bit better um, so there are four color variations this is the black variation um, or the black and white variation I suppose um, this is the one that has the best grade I'm looking to upgrade each of my batter ups um, to try and get them a little higher, uh, they're a little bit low for for my liking right now. Um, so this is number ten, still a great card, really really love it. Uh, number nine is one of the first vintage cards I've ever purchased, and I I bought this raw. This is a 1941 uh, play ball, Hank Greenberg, in an SGC 50, which is a VGX4. Um, yeah, I bought this raw, and I had an eBay gift card that took like fifty or so dollars off, which was great. So it made it very nice and affordable back back when, and um, it's really nice. The only reason it got a four, and you probably won't be able to see, but on this edge right here, there's a sp you could probably see it just right there. It's a spot of paper loss, um, and these cards generally are not centered very well. Um, this one is decent, I suppose, but. I would say this is a, a, a pretty fair grade um, for this card, and uh, the back here is really clean as well. A lot of, a lot of collectors, um, surface level, don't pay much attention to backs, but they are just as important as the front. Uh, number eight, we have uh, a 1938 Gaudi Heads Up. This is uh, th the second variation, the one with the cartoons. There is a a more plain version that just has um, no cartoons that's graded uh, an SGC 20. I'm looking to upgrade that one too actually. Um, this one's in a 40. I bought this card raw too and sent it in. Um, I, I think I prefer the ones with the cartoons a little bit better because they're very personal to the player. Um, so you have things like here it says Hank plays a classy first bag. Hank is a New York City boy and attended NYU and Greenberg is a home run hitter uh, his batting is responsible for Tiger's uh, fine record for the past four seasons. And uh, it's very just personalized to each player, which I think is really, really cool. They really put a lot of effort into this. Um, really got to get a better camera, I think. I just got this one, but 
I've seen some of you guys out there, um, Mike Phillips included, that have just stellar cameras that really don't pick up on the glare cards very well, so uh, I have to maybe invest in a new one. Um, next card I have here is a uh, 36 Gaudi Wide Pen Type 3. This is um, one of five variations of this card. Uh, this is probably the third rarest card. Um, it's a Type 2 that comes up a lot less frequently. Um, that's graded in SGC uh, 10 I have. Um, this card's really, really sharp though. I like, uh, this is a very classic photo that they use of him, and uh, it, it doesn't come around all too often, so I really like to grab them whenever I, I can, if I, if I can upgrade. Uh, this one's a more recent card of mine. You probably have seen it if you keep track of my videos. Uh, the next card is easily the biggest card that I have in my collection. Um, this is a 1935 Gaudi Premium R309-2. And uh, just to compare, this is the size of my head compared to the card, so it's huge. Um, this thing is uh, very, very condition sensitive um, and pretty amazing. Uh, there, I, I like the, um, the photograph they used here of him as well. Uh, this was back when, before they got like the script D on their hat, which you might see later in this video. Um, or maybe I can show you one here. Yeah, so if you realize in the 1936 Gaudi, they have the script D on the hat. And I guess in 35, or whenever they took this picture, maybe 34, they had the block letter D on the hat. Um, but it's just like a beautiful card. And uh, it's it's actually pretty thin. You can nearly see right through it um, on these things, and they're very rare. So whenever someone um, bought some Gaudi gum wrappers, they would send like ten or twenty of them in, and in in return would get one of these enormous cards. So um, being just that purely, uh, not a lot of them were redeemed because of their nature, or survived because of their um, likelihood of of getting. Uh, of you know getting damaged I guess throughout time uh, so that was one two three five uh, this is six um, this is one of the rare cards in my collection this is a 1936 uh, worldwide gum Hank Greenberg this is actually a Canadian issue and half of the card on the back which I love so much is in French um, the second part of that maybe Whoever can read French maybe can translate, but there's an English translation on the top, so maybe you, you really don't need to. Um, this is an SGC 20, and these cards have really, really shot up. Um, whenever I, I see a new card show up on, on, on auction or eBay, I'm really always very surprised at how much they really go for. Um, just to give you a, an example, um, there, uh, there's a card right now on Clean Sweep Auctions, um, webs like web store, web store or website, however you want to sort of call it, um, and it's a, it's a uh, a PSA two, with a nice little stain on the border, and he's asking nine hundred dollars for that card. Um, this is probably the third best card in the worldwide gum set behind uh, the Dimaggio and the Gehrig, which routinely get four figures uh, in any condition. Um, so this is really, really a very tough set and um, a, a astronomically rare card that just keeps increasing in value. So I'm just lucky to have one, to be honest. <laughs> um, so uh, maybe eventually I'll look to upgrade, but I am certainly content with, with, with that grade for that card. Um, so we're down to the last four. It was really, really hard to pick favorites between all of these. Um, I think I'm actually going to rearrange them right now. Um, but uh, this next card I actually got from uh, Clean Sweep, uh, one of their eBay listings. Another Canadian card. Um, this is a 1937 OPG Greenberg in a SGC 50, which is a VGX4. Um, this card is really, really quite unique. It was modeled, uh, the design choice is modeled after the 1933 DeLong set, which I really wish Greenberg had one, that set's really, really cool, as well as um, the batter up, because you can see sort of the stencil on it, maybe hard to see. Um, 
but uh, it's really such a cool card. Again, it has half of the back is on, is in French, the other half is in English, which I think is super super cool. Um, and uh, this one you don't see as much really either. Um, and and th and these cards are climbing as well. Um, I was really lucky to get both of these Canadian cards, although different conditions for around the same price. Um, and I'm really honestly just lucky to have both of them um, in, in any condition, much less a VGX4 in this one. Um, but this is such a clean card. It really has like very, very nice eye appeal. It is black and white and the photo registry just naturally on the card is not not super, super sharp. Um, but it's just a really, really fun little card that's just worth a ton of money. Um, so uh, I really like this one a lot. Top three, getting into the top three here. Um, this was my uh, 2016 Chicago, uh, sorry, 2016 National Purchase in Atlantic City. Uh, I bought this card raw and um, I really couldn't believe how, I, I was anticipating a good grade but I was really very, uh, very happy when it came back as good as it did. Um, you guys have probably seen this card before. I just wish it would freaking focus. Um, this is a 1935 uh, Diamond Star Greenberg. This is the corrected version um, with his name spelled correctly. Uh, this is a 70, so an X plus. Uh, this card is super freaking sharp and um, there's really not much to look at with this card that SGC could have found an error with, in my opinion. Surface is super clean. The corners are sharp, not as sharp as they possibly could be, of course, which is probably where they got it. Um, but it, it's just the color on the card is also really great. Um, it's just a stunner. It's just really a stunner. Now, with that being said, the next card I'm going to show you is probably even more of a stunner. This is the 1935 Diamond Star Uncorrected Error. You can see if it would just decide to focus. I don't know how to focus it. Anyway, uh, whatever. Um, you can see his name is spelled incorrectly here G, uh, with the B-U-R-G. Uh, I would say out of the two that the uncorrected error um, has the be has the better color um, and whiter borders as you could probably see um, and it's also just a much rarer card because once they figured their error they stopped production and they corrected it um, it's I bought this card raw as well and um, I was pretty nervous about grading it because um, I, I really got it for a pretty outstanding price um, I would buy that card 11 times out of 10 again if I had the opportunity and um, I, I honestly was a little bit concerned about it coming back trimmed um, because of the way that it was centered but it came back clean thank god and um, it's really one of the best cards in my collection, in my opinion. It's just such an amazing piece. Um, and I, I'm really, really lucky to have it, honestly, because that eBay auction that came up, I got that thing for a steal. Um, last but not least, of course, um, a Hank Greenberg collection cannot be complete without a 34 Gaudi. Uh, the color on this card uh, now, being that this card is, what, uh, almost 80 years old? Oh, no, over 80 years old. Um, it's 83 years old. Uh, you would think that, you know, over time it would fade, but this thing is beautiful. Uh, of course, it's in an SGC60, X5. Um, I'm not looking to upgrade this one anytime soon. There are consistently going up in value. I know that value is not a big thing here, but I do like to talk about it because of how this market is going lately. Um, higher grade or mid to higher grade vintage has just been rising and rising. Um, 
uh, th they're not selling, but there are sellers that want this card in this condition for four figures, and um, uh, you would be shocked to, to to know how much I actually paid for this card. Um, so it's just it's honestly a thing of beauty. The registration on the photo as well, like it's a it's a drawing or a painting, is also just incredible. Um, I just wish this camera could do it justice. The back is also really, really clean. Um, really nothing to, I mean, the back is, is quite off center, left to right, as you could see, um, which probably knocked it down a bit, and so is the front. So maybe if it was a little more centered, I probably could have gotten an X, an X plus, or maybe even a six. But I think this is a very, very fair grade for this card. Um, and I'm uh, unbelievably fortunate to have it in my collection again. Um, I'm not sure when the next one uh, in this sort of little series I'll do, but it was really fun to just sort of go through. And it took a long time for me to sort of rank where these cards belong. So that was also just a really fun exercise for me to go through um, and talk about them. I just love, I love talking about my collection, as you could probably understand. Um, Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Uh, leave a comment, maybe, if um, for which sort of uh, subset or section of my collection you'd like to see next, and uh, you know, maybe I can even do a voting poll. Vote and poll, vote and poll. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. And until next time, gents, take it easy.